quote, what Trump offers is an easy escape from the pain. To every complex problem, he promises a simple solution. He never offers details for how these plans will work because he can't. Trump's promises are the needle in America's collective vein. Now, those words were not uttered by a Democrat. They were not uttered by any one of the many thoughtful critics in both parties of Donald Trump in the press. They were uttered by the man who now stands beside Donald Trump on the 2024 Republican ticket as his running mate. J.D. Vance is now casting his sharp, unsparing criticism of Donald Trump, things like calling him a, quote, cynical a-hole or, quote, America's Hitler, as a result of brainwashing he was subjected to by the media. Really. Here's how he tried to explain it on Fox News last night. I was certainly skeptical of Donald Trump in 2016, but President Trump was a great president and he changed my mind. I think he changed the minds of a lot of Americans because, again, he delivered that peace and prosperity. If you go back to what I thought in 2016, another thing that was going on, Sean, is I bought into the media's lies and distortions. I bought into this idea that somehow he was going to be so different, a terrible threat to democracy. It was a joke. <laughs> And what are voters to make of someone so susceptible to TV? An Earth 2 answer from an Earth 2 candidate encapsulating everything you need to know about who J.D. Vance is now and where the MAGA movement is heading as well. Liz Cheney puts it like this, quote, J.D. Vance has pledged that he would do what Mike Pence would not do, overturn an election and illegally seize power. He says the president can ignore the rulings of our courts. He would capitulate to Russia and sacrifice the freedom of our allies in Ukraine. The Trump GOP is no longer the party of Lincoln, Reagan, or the Constitution. If this new GOP's governing agenda is the 900-plus pages that make up Project 2025, filled with calls to purge the civil service, turn the justice system into the president's personal police and retribution force, enact a hard-right agenda on LGBTQ plus rights and abortion, then J.D. Vance is its leading evangelist. In a profile of Vance in Politico, Steve Bannon says that he is, quote, at the nerve center of this movement. Politico adding this, quote, Bannon even suggested that Vance could become the St. Paul to Trump's Jesus, the zealous convert who spreads the gospel of Trumpism further than Trump himself ever could, end quote. And here's how the president of the Heritage Foundation reacted to news that Vance had been chosen to be the Republican nominee for vice president. Okay. We have confirmed news that Senator Vance is the vice presidential running mate. You will see a broad smile on my face <laughs> because you may know that we're good friends. I will offer two comments about that. The first is the entire list of names considered are great men and women, truly, truly, all of them friends of heritage. There among them, though, was someone that privately we were really rooting for, and he's just been named the running mate. So the guy that Heritage was, in their own words, really rooting for, Trump went with that guy. The Republican vice presidential candidate's transformation from hard Trump critic to hard right authoritarian culture warrior. And what it says about the future of the GOP and the future of this country, should Trump and Vance prevail, is where we begin today with some of our most favorite reporters and friends. In Milwaukee, at the RNC, NBC News correspondent Von Hilliard is back with us. Also joining us, MSNBC political analyst, Democratic strategist Cornell Belcher is here. With us at the table, host of MSNBC's Politics Nation, president of the National Action Network, the Reverend Al Sharpton, is with us. Also joining us, former RNC spokesman, host of the Bulwark podcast, MSNBC political analyst Tim Miller's here. Uh, Rev, Jesus has been invoked. I'll go to you first. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, you know, I think that th that, if not directly, it borders on being sacrilegious. I mean... Borders? <laughs> uh, I, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> It's blasphemous, really, yeah. to say that Trump was Jesus and uh, J.D. Vance was was uh, Paul uh, is absolutely an insult to everybody that believes in the Bible. Let's start there. But to look at the fact that Heritage were the ones that sponsored and authored Project 2025 that Trump claims he knows nothing about, had nothing to do with it, but he chooses their candidate to be the vice president. I think the real headline today is that Heritage uh, has admitted this is their candidate. He's the one they wanted. They did the 900 pages that would 
really undo the democratic process in this country, and they have their candidate as the vice presidential candidate for the uh, for for the this uh, cycle, and the fact that Trump, with all of his denying he knew anything, he accepted their candidate, and I, I think that that is something we should not run away from too quickly. Tim. Yeah, I, I guess I want to build on that. We could do, I could do two hours on the political <laughs> of J.D. Vance and his hypocrisy we, and all his quotes. We've got exactly that much time. Yeah, we could do it all. <laughs> but I think the most important thing to think about is J.D. Vance as governing partner of Donald Trump, because it is extremely alarming. It's the most alarming person that he could have chosen on the, on the short list of people that were in the mix. Um, J.D. Vance is not going to be breaks on Donald Trump in the Oval Office, God forbid, if he gets in there on any of his crazy ideas. Um, a lot of times people that tried to be brakes, you know, last time were just bowled over, but still a brake is better than a gas pedal. Uh, J.D. Vance went along with all of Donald Trump's most ostentatious, anti-conservative, anti-just um, just, just common sense policies and thoughts, the vaccine denialism, full bore on January 6th, full bore on election denialism, full bore on blaming Joe Biden for the Putin invasion of Ukraine and siding with Putin. So if you just think about the domestic policies when it comes to the, to the border and Donald Trump's heinous plans there, J.D. Vance will be fully on board with all of that across a wide range of issues all of the anti-democracy elements, J.D. Vance is going to be somebody that is his wingman and says yes to the things that he wants to do that flout in the face of the rule of law. And I think that's extremely scary. You know, one of the stories that broke Saturday before the assassination attempt on Donald Trump is the kind of story that might have shaped a week of conversations, right? It was a Jim Rutenberg, Nick Corsonetti story, um, Von Hilliard, about the plan to overturn the 2024 election and make sure that it cannot be certified. And I, I know you were there with Mike Pence when he um, was cast in this role eight years ago. Um, this is, for Donald Trump, another casting. There's no evidence that's, that's come out that it's, that it's something much different than that. Um, I wonder, in your view, the importance of what Liz Cheney points out about J.D. Vance, that on this one thing, this one line, this single line that we ever found out about, there may have been others, but none that we, none that we ever found out about, single line that Mike Pence wouldn't cross in service of Donald Trump was overturning the 2020 election. This is a line J.D. Vance would barrel through. And J.D. Vance, I, I think, was interestingly asked the same question by Sean Hannity last night that Mike Pence was asked eight years ago, which I talked about on your show yesterday. And that was on the day that they were selected, how would you, in a moment in which you disagree with Donald Trump, how would you handle that? And Mike Pence eight years ago responded that he'd go and share his disagreements with the president behind closed doors, but then walk out shoulder to shoulder and stand by the president in solidarity. And Mike Pence did that every single day until January. 6, 2021. J.D. Vance last night, he said that he'd go behind closed doors and he'd discuss it with the president. He stopped short of going further than that. But I think that that is where the question comes as to, for four years, how would J.D. Vance ultimately uh, maneuver his way through in that capacity as being the right hand of Donald Trump? And when you were to get to potentially four years from now and the act of certifying in the election, of course, it's a serious question here. And I think that, uh, you know, for J.D. Vance, I think much like Donald Trump takes credit for saving Mike Pence from, as Donald Trump liked to say, Mike Pence was going to lose his re-election bid for Indiana governor back in the day if it weren't for him picking him as VP. You hear the same thing from Donald Trump now, and J.D. Vance gives him that credit that in 2022, when he ran for the U.S. Senate in a crowded Republican primary in Ohio, he helped win him the seat with that endorsement, and J.D. Vance gives him the credit, and then he helped him win the general election. And so in a lot of ways, uh, Donald Trump takes credit for uh, J.D. Vance being politically where he is right now, and the question is, just how far could J.D. Vance go to ultimately ensuring that Donald Trump is able to execute exactly what the vision is or the extent to exactly how much do they share the same vision? Because I think that, as Tim was just outlining, in a lot of ways, J.D. Vance publicly is right alongside in terms of policy, domestic and foreign policy, with the president's position, with the former president's positions. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.